One of my most anticipated games for the month of June had to be Super Mario Maker 2. Now, Super Mario Maker on the Nintendo Wii U was an absolutely fantastic game. Being able to create your own 2D Mario levels and share them with the world, being able to download an infinite number of Mario levels to make the game have infinite replay value was absolutely fantastic to me, and I super enjoyed that game. But then I thought about the last time I played a 2D Mario game. And I'm not saying that New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe was a bad game. I was just saying that it sort of lacked a certain charm, a certain flair, a certain identity. A lot of the levels just felt very stock and cut and dry. And I just didn't really enjoy the game all that much. But then I thought to myself, maybe I'm just tired of 2D Mario games. Maybe I'm just sort of past this point and I just like the 3D Mario games better. Well, Super Mario Maker 2 has finally come out and I've been spending a lot of time with the game. And honestly, I could say this has rejuvenated my love of 2D Mario games. It is an almost perfect game as well. So what do I like about Super Mario Maker 2? What makes this game so special? And why is it almost perfect? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about Super Mario Maker 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my god, it's Stevie Richards! So to me, Super Mario Maker 2 on the Nintendo Switch is really a tale of three different games in one. You have the level creation aspect of the game, you have the single player aspect of the game, and then you have the online aspect of the game. First, we're gonna talk about level creation. Now, if you're looking for an in-depth review of level creation in this game, I, I'm not the guy for you because really I'm not the most creative person in the world. <laughs> Perfect. But I did play around with the level creation mode because I wanted to see how it played, and for the most part I thought it played pretty good. It's definitely a bit different than the original Super Mario Maker though, because with the original Super Mario Maker you had the gamepad, and it made it very easy to sort of draw and create your own levels, whereas in this you don't have a gamepad. So you have different things like wheels, and these wheels have different things on them, such as land creation, item creation, and of course enemy creation. And you basically just bring up this wheel and you drag and drop whatever you want to put in the level. Now one thing I really like about the level creation is how much more stuff they've added. There is a ton of new elements that you could do in level creation that really make the levels sort of stand out and feel very more robust than the original Super Mario Maker did. Of course, there's different things like different themes that you could do for the levels as well with different games in the Mario universe. And I really like that about the game. One thing I thought was kind of cool, and this may have been in the original Super Mario Maker, I can't recall, but I thought it was cool that you could sort of make an all new Super Mario Brothers style level by using the forest background as this wasn't available in the original game. So by having the Super Mario Brothers sprites in this forest background, it makes it almost like a new Super Mario Brothers game, but not su new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. We're not going to go down that rabbit hole, but I do enjoy little things like that because I really feel like it can add to the creation aspect of the game. There's so many more elements. There's so much more stuff you could do. I just don't like building my own levels. I did build my own level, and next thing I knew, there was three Bowsers attacking me and trying to kill me and like chasing me down throughout the levels, and I put this block here and it just looked stupid and it didn't really work well. It was absolute chaos. It was absolute chaos. But I can definitely appreciate all the stuff that they have added into the level creation. The next aspect of the game is the single player aspect of the game. And surprisingly, this was pretty robust. Now, it's not robust in terms of story or anything like that because there is a story mode in the game. Basically, Princess Peach's castle comes crashing to the ground and you have to rebuild it. How do you rebuild it? By giving a Toadette character different coins. And the coins then amass and you can build different sections of the castle to rebuild it to its former glory. Yeah, you know, it's a basic Mario sort of story. But what I really like about this is how you earn the coins. You earn the coins by completing different levels. And some of these levels that are in this are absolutely mind-blowing. Some of the best 2D Mario levels that I have ever played. And that really sort of incorporates back into the level creation aspect of the game because you can do so much more stuff. There's things like on-off switches that really add to the level. You could do different types of levels that make it feel like a completely different genre, like the puzzle elements of the game. You can basically hide different coins in a level, and in order to cl clear the level, you have to find all of the pink coins within the level. And that really makes it like a puzzle game. You're trying to figure out, how do I get to this pink coin? Where is this pink coin? And it really adds another layer of strategy to the game. Of course, there's these shoot 'em up levels with the little Bowser cart things that you have, and it makes it feel like a shoot 'em up game. I had some absolutely epic moments playing some of these created levels in the single player stuff that were just absolutely mind-blowing. I was like, this is one of my favorite shmups of all time now. 
You can just do so much stuff within the single player stuff. And I feel like the story mode of the game really sort of gives you a glimpse into what you can do and what you can create. There's a whole bunch of different backgrounds. There's a whole bunch of different sound effects that you can use. Just absolutely top notch levels are featured in the story mode aspect of the game. Now the story mode itself isn't all that long. There are some unlockable things and you can go back and replay the levels as well. You just don't get the big coin bonus at the start of it, but you do keep all the coins that you get. But really, I was impressed with the story mode. Some of these levels that I played are some of my favorite 2D Mario levels of all time now, and I really like just how seamless it is switching between the different styles of the games. Playing something like a Super Mario Brothers level versus a Super Mario 3D World level, you would think that it would feel very jarring switching between one and the other, but it feels very smooth, it feels very seamless, and the transition is absolutely amazing. I absolutely love the single player story, I absolutely love the levels in the single player story, and it really surprised me with just how well done it was. And then of course you have the online aspect of the game, which was one of the selling points of the original Super Mario Maker. And once again it returns, and for the most part, it's pretty damn good. For the most part, there is a big problem that we have to talk about. But much like the original Super Mario Maker, you can of course download and play other people's levels. And you can arrange it by different things, the hottest levels, the newest levels, the most popular levels, and you can check out these levels. Now one thing I do like that they added in this game are that there's tags for the levels now. So you can sort of tag what this level is like? Is it a short level? Is it a puzzle based level? You sort of know what you're getting into instead of just reading a simple description of the levels. And most of the levels that I played were pretty fun. There are some chaotic ones in the game, of course, because there's sadists out there that just love to make these crazy levels. But I was able to find a lot of actual fun levels that feel like they would be something incorporated into a Mario game. There's also a leaderboard system, which already has way too many people dominating it. And I won't be talking about it too much because I will never be on the leaderboards, but it does keep track of how many wins you get in the online multiplayer and things of that nature. Now your online character is a character that you can actually dress up and you basically by accomplishing different tasks such as beating levels and beating a certain number of levels and winning things in online multiplayer you can get more clothes for your character. Let's take a look at my character. Like he's pretty sassy and I don't I don't really know why I made him so sassy but I made him sassy so yeah sassy RGT there you go. But I do like the outfit that I have on like if this was a real outfit I would totally rock that so if anyone knows if these clothes were real let me know in the comments down below because I would definitely wear an outfit like this. Another element of the online multiplayer is the fact that you can search for levels by different codes. Basically, if you create a level, you get a code for that level and then you can share it with the world. Now, let's just throw in some random numbers and letters and see what kind of level we come up with, shall we? What's this? An RGT85 course? Your favorite YouTuber ever? Wow, this is just amazing. I can't believe it. Completely random. I just threw in random letters and numbers and this popped up. Okay, maybe they sent it to the Facebook page. If you're not a fan of the Facebook fan page, make sure you guys like it in the description box down below. I'm always doing weird stuff on there. But yeah, you can do different levels and you can share those levels by a code and it works really well. I was really happy to see this level come into the inbox on the Facebook page. So shout out to the dude who made this level. Super cool little level. Make sure you guys check it out. I definitely really got a good laugh out of it. And then you have the online multiplayer aspect of the game. Now it is worth noting that as of now, there is no ability to play with friends online. But Nintendo did hear the outcry based on the fact that there was no friend multiplayer and decided to change that and add it in a later patch of the game. Damn these entitled gamers! But it's definitely a good thing they're adding it in, but it really should have been something in there in the first place. So with the online multiplayer, there are two different modes. There is the cooperative mode and there is the versus mode. The cooperative mode is co-op. Like you're playing with three other characters, you're trying to get to the end of the level, you can use teamwork, but it doesn't really matter. As long as one of the characters gets to the end of the level, everyone is a winner. So yay, we're all winners! It throws you into a level based on skill. You can choose what sort of skill point you want to do an easy level, an expert level, whatever you want to do whatever gets the most votes before it is what the type of level you will be put into now the versus mode is a bit different versus mode you're obviously cutthroat you're trying to finish the level first and get to the end of the level by any means necessary and i like these modes but that kind of is the big problem with this game is the online multiplayer it's just not very good. I think it's good in terms of ideas, it's just the execution is what is very, very lacking. I have played some matches where they felt pretty perfect. I have played most matches where there was a lot of lag and there was input lag. And I've played some matches that were like single digit frame rates. And it's like, what am I paying for a Nintendo Switch Online for? I could play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe with no lag whatsoever. It's a racing game, it's a fast paced game. You have more people playing this game. It is a more graphically taxing game. Why can I play this game with no problems? 
games, but in a 2D platformer, I'm having so many problems with the online. And it's a widespread issue. And it's really a big deal because a lot of these levels are kind of crazy and they require precision. If you played a 2D Mario game, you have to be pretty precise. So it's definitely very disappointing to see just how laggy the online is for the most part. Like I said, some matches I played were perfectly fine. Most matches I played definitely had some lag and some matches that I played were almost unplayable. It's definitely a shame to see that Nintendo did not manage to nail the online aspect of the game and it just sort of begs the question, what are we paying for Nintendo Switch Online for? Another minor complaint I do have is the fact that there doesn't seem to be any skins in this game. One of the cool things about Super Mario Maker on the Nintendo Wii U was all the skins that they added to the game. You can play as different characters essentially in these levels and it doesn't seem like there's any skins in this game. I guess maybe because of the 3D world aspects of the game, in order to make a 3D world level you actually have to start that from scratch. You cannot design a 3D world level and then implement it into another style of level because of the 2.5D elements of the thing. So maybe that's why, but it's definitely a shame to see. I think they could have just sort of bypassed the 3D world stuff and just said, hey, you can only use skins in the 2D style levels and it would have been fine. But those gripes aside, I think Super Mario Maker 2 is a fantastic game and definitely an almost perfect game. If they could fix the online multiplayer to be not laggy all the time, I think this would be one of the best games of 2019. The fact that you have so many creative levels in the story mode is just absolutely fantastic. Some of the best 2D levels I've played in a Mario game are featured in this story mode. The level creation stuff is definitely much more robust. You could do a lot more with it. Being able to download your levels and play them on your Nintendo Switch when you're not online as well is another huge addition to this game. They definitely did a lot of great stuff with this sequel of the game. It's just a few minor things definitely hold it back from being nearly perfect. But I think with improved online multiplayer, it'll be fantastic. And the fact that there's infinite replay value with the game. There's so many levels to check out. There's so many different levels to try. It's just absolutely fantastic. So those are my thoughts on Super Mario Maker 2. Let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the game. Did you pick it up? Are you enjoying it? Have you seen some online problems as well? Or are you sitting on the fence about it? And now you're going to pick it up because of my glowing review of the game. And as always, guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Check out other videos on the channel. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.